Okay. Well, okay, this week, we kind of are going to start a little slow, and you're going, like, well, what's so big about this one? It's not a big deal. Up to the very last story, which is just one of those incredible, holy shit, this could have been a disaster stories. You know, otherwise known as, we got a closer. Um, oh, hi. So... You had like a, a hippo for all seasons. One tentacle is shorter than the rest, but you can't tell when I twirl them. <laughs> this one always reminds me of the little octopus from Finding Nemo. That that looks like a horrible genetic awfulness. So, that looks like something that came from from Fringe, actually. It's a hip octopus. Oh, wait, what season is that episode in? I don't know, but there's one where you're, there's like actually a little Cthulhu horror that Walter ends up keeping as a pet. It's good times. Yeah. Okay, so time for the intro. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And remember, kids, we're starting small. We're going to build up to it. So, um, you know how th- th- guys have this thing and if they see they something, two songs about it, if we see something vaguely phallic, we're going to make dick jokes about it. It's, it's a thing. It's, it's genetic. We, we can't stop it. We apologize in advance. It's just part of our DNA, except there are the rare cases where this impulse is, in fact, the correct one. And this happened from uh, from China. Um, this this was actually designed. L- l- oh, my God. Internet lights up as People's Daily HQ erected. The new People's Daily premise has attracted numerous suggestive comments on social media. Shaped the new headquarters of the People's Daily, the Communist Party's main propaganda machine, has sparked heated discussion online for looking a bit too phallic. We're getting this. You got to see it. Big screen right there. Yes. Um, Too phallic? That was designed. Um, The 150 meter tall, 150 meters tall. Located in the East... (laughs) Extension of the Capitol's Central Business dis- District. Um, in a recent interview, Zhao explained that his design echoed the ancient Chinese philosophy of round sky and square earth, with the top part being cylindrical and the rest being squarish. No. Is that squarish? That's a penis. Yeah. That's that not, doesn't look- that doesn't look square to me. I mean, admittedly, it's obviously not finished, but I don't think I've ever seen a round frame for a square building before. No. And um, the this is the best part. Any attempts to talk about the fact that it does look like a penis were censored. I'm not even kidding. So if you try and mention, hey, that looks like a dick, the censor the shit. Instead of, you know how sometimes on new buildings they'll hang like those enormous banners that say grand opening? Are they going to hang an enormous banner that says censored instead? It's Because that would be pretty cool. It's, That'd be a photo. You cannot look at some, they knew. They knew what the f- this guy did this shit on purpose. I mean, unless it was designed entirely by Unix... I can't see how you wouldn't. I just love how the Communist Party right now is just going, no, no, it's not a dick. Really, it's not a dick. They they got totally rolled on this one. But it is. It's a dick. Yeah. Look, 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 I'm going to make it bigger. <laughs> That's what she said. Um. Well, this, it won't, okay. We're having trouble making it bigger. <laughs> I guess every every browser has this problem at some time in its life. 
Happens, happens to happens to them all. Yeah. Um, Maybe they hoped that if they built a building shaped like a big dick, Donald Trump would obviously want to sponsor it. Oh. Or mayor, or, or just no, consider it part of his family. He, you know, he's from a family of large penises. It's genetic. <laughs> that that's 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 a penis. I'm sorry. It, ah, all right. We're going back to our good old fashioned crazy. We, we it's kind of heartwarming almost. It, we've got it's, it's, and it never is. It never is. But we we've got some of the uh, the good old fashioned crazy here. Um, This one comes to us from. Oh, God. And there is we got video. We got video. This one comes down from um, I believe this is Indian. Yeah. Indianapolis. I don't even need to set this one up. I just, you know, it's, it's us. You know what's going on. Statehouse Treaker with, quote, extra human strength causes mayhem for officers, motorists. And we're going to watch the video here. Uh, a naked man burst into a control room at a Citizens Energy Group facility last week, punched a worker in the face and began choking at the startled employee with a large metal pipe. The alleged battery was a culmination of a bizarre chain of events that started in downtown Indianapolis um, sometime before 8 a.m. The nude man, identified in court documents as Gilbert S. Sweezy, who we got to put his picture on the screen because... Yeah, that's a picture. Wow! He looks like, you know those stress dolls? <laughs> that when you squeeze them, like their eyes and okay. ears pop okay. out? I'm going to preface this by saying this is this is awful of me judging someone on their appearance. This is mean. This is cruel. However, <clears throat> a roof, a roof, a roof, baby, roof, baby. Never saw the Goonies, did you? No, <sighs> we discussed this. You never saw the Goonies. I it's I the DVD is in my home. The boyfriend was going to make me watch it, and then my DVD player shit the bed. <laughs> well, so I fixed fate, that though. Fate does not want me to see the Goonies. I think it's well, on Netflix. You, I mean, I, it might be on Netflix. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, all right. Well, and I could still see it. Well, anyway, back to this nonsense. Um, Gilbert S. Sweezy. That's a name. Uh, the suspect document state refused officers commands to stop ran again onto Maryland Street, where this time he bolted into the path of the traffic and approached vehicles of startled motorists. I don't know what's more startling, this guy being naked or just him. Um, I want to know where the super strength comes in to play. Sweezy seemed to be looking for a ride. He had a crazed look in his eyes as the 50 year old. That's what she said. <laughs> Um, after finding no motorist inclined to give him a wide squeeze, he jumped into the passenger side of a Chevy S10 pickup and then tried to shove the driver out of the truck. But the man at the wheel fought uh, the unwanted passenger until the two pursuing officers arrived. They tried to grab Sweezy. Suspect pressed himself in the driver's seat with the truck's owner and pushed his foot on the gas pedal. The truck's driver kept his foot on the brake. So he's sitting on the guy's lap, pushing the gas while the other guy's pushing the brake. That's really bad for your engine. It gets better when the two officers tried again to grab the naked man. I'm quoting the article here. He proved too slippery. The suspect was sweating profusely before. <laughs> and was able to pull away from us. We had a guy, a naked guy, yep. carjacking, who was covered in lube and they couldn't get a hold of him. Um, is this a thing now? Yeah, the guy who got is hit's okay. Carjacking. Um, yeah. Throughout his exploits, the cop noted me. He showed extra human strength. Well, you know, sloth was a little bit. No, I'm not going to go down there. Oh, this I'm, is the kind of thing that, like, at LARPs, we would always cover it up. When some like terrible character did something stupid and went on a rampage, yeah, or like spend our police and media influence to either say that he was on PCP 
or like an escaped mental patient or something. Phantom Roxas, you win. His battle cry for the naked rampage was, hey, you guys. Again, the Goonies, you have to have to know it. But that's that's kind of that's kind of perfect. Um, wow. You know what? I'm just looking at Gilbert here. Gilbert S. Sweezy. Gilbert S. Sweezy. And I got to think, when you get to this point in your life, the look, look at his eyes, man. He's got that thousand yard stare going on. Yeah. He just. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it says that photo from 2006. Still. Look at that. Because he woke up one morning. What did he get arrested for in 2006? I wonder. I don't know. But this was this is kind of incredible. He broke into the control room at the Citizens Energy Group. So he's going into a to a power facility, which is already winning him friends. Yeah. How does again, I ask, like always, how does something like this start? (laughs) How does it like you don't just wind up in the middle of the business district naked? Like, that's not usually where the aliens drop you off. Yeah, we're... we're, (laughs) They drop you off in the middle of a cornfield in Nebraska. Yeah, we're coming in on, like, page five of the script here. We're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're in Medias Res. (laughs) What happened... What led you to this point? Because you had to get to the business district where the power company is somehow... Which presents, <laughs> who at some point had a means of transportation and clothing. What happened to them? I, you know, I just, I got I'm looking here and it's like, I think this was caused by a severe lack of give a fuck. Cause just, I, I think I'm still going with the aliens. The aliens. Yeah. I think aliens did fire in the sky. Just. Yeah. They were aiming for a cornfield and <laughs> missed by a lot. He's one of those alien super soldiers from long after the X-Files got crap. And that's why he has super strength. It's all so clear to me now. Well, we've got our douche quake for this week coming up here. Um, We've gotten in this country. We're we're very much a whole bout for the troops. Anything, Mm -hmm. if it's for the troops, it is sacrosanct. You do not fuck with it because by God, It is for the troops. Right. Well, this guy, he's going to be facing his ass a lynching. Um, I've got to get the song. Uh, Yeah, here we go. We got you got to have the song. Charity for troops spent money on liquor movies. Local head of a charitable organization claimed to help soldiers incarcerated for crimes allegedly committed during combat instead uses donated funds at liquor stores, red box kiosks, and for other personal purposes. Oh, Riverdale resident Carl Johnson, head of the... Oh, we can stop it now. Uh, we get the point. Head of yeah. the uh, charity A Dollar to Care signed an agreement with the Attorney General's office to cease operations. You also pay a $20,000 fine half of which the attorney general will distribute to charity. Um, Charity's Facebook page lists his mission. Our major goal is to help in the event of financial burden, such as food, travel expenses to and from their incarcerated warriors, warriors, phone calls home. All right. That's all. That always makes me leery when they start referring to soldiers as warriors. That's, that's just kind of creepy. Uh, a complaint received with the attorney general's office obtained by the Dayton daily news Says it's from the attorney of the soldier of the charity claim to support. It says Johnson was using the name of that soldier and others to raise money, but quote, not a single soldier's family has stepped up and acknowledged they have received any support. That's yeah, that lady is in for a rough time. I I spent the loot on hookers and booze. But I like after after the Newtown shootings happened, like 400 fake charities popped up. Mm. And I just like that kills me. Like, I don't even have anything funny to say about that because it's just like it, that's so galling to me. 
like that you jump on like oh, yeah. you see something terrible happen after the Boston bombings happening a bunch of fake mm-hmm. like charities popped up and like you see something terrible happen and your first thought is I can make a lot of money off that I can scam people mm-hmm. you're a really bad person you are going to hell do not pass go do not collect $200 mm-hmm. sure. go straight to hell, to hell. And all right, this is the one thing whenever this shit happens also, especially this guy wasn't just a fly by night. You know, he wasn't just saying, I'll collect money. No, he had a Facebook page, he had everything established. She? she? Yeah. No, I said Re- Re- uh, Riverside resident Carl Carey Johnson. Oh, sorry. thought it said Carl. My bad. That I looks like an L. Yeah, it does. Um, Carey Johnson. All right. She'd set up the Facebook page. She set up all this shit. She's got her name on it. This they're going to find you. Yeah. They're they're they going to find you. They going to find you. Yes, you are not even hiding because for God's sake, how, woman. Uh, yeah. How do you think you're not going to get caught? You're collecting money. You're, you're she's using people's names. Oh, I helped this guy. No, no you didn't. Do they think First, then? Did, did they think she was? Did she think no one was going to check? She said, I'll be fine. Nobody checks these things. It's like references. Nobody checks those. Eyes. It'll be fine. You know. I'd also like to point out that at the bottom of the st- page, there's a more from Dayton Daily News threesome looking for hotel room. Why is that a headline? We, we're both clicking on it to find out. Oh, yeah. Three people huddling in a car with lights on in the parking lot of a church at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> it's very, yeah. Uh, uh, they admitted a nearby ba- bar and the two women and man were using their smartphones trying to find a decent so- hotel since they were too far from home to make the trip. Wow, you, you fail. <laughs> you, you fail. You fail sex at that point. Yeah. <laughs> okay um f- next in our series of that's not what 911 is for oh dear uh we've seen people call 911 to mediate their troubles to report uh businesses for not satisfying their needs for chicken mcnuggets for chick well yeah um this one kind of goes a little b- above and beyond it's not just it. Oh, oh, for fuck's sake. St. Pete man calls 911 and asks cops to bring him Kool-Aid and drugs. I'm really shocked that this happened in Florida. Jarvis Sutton said he wanted three things greatest Sunday. State. What? Our, I'm really shocked that this happened in Florida, our greatest state. Mm. Said he wanted three things Sunday, food, drink, and drugs. He asked the wrong people for help getting those items, though. Police said Sutton, 34, called 911 approximately 80 times. 80 times. The defendant admitted to calling 911 because he, quote, wanted Kool-Aid, burgers, and weed to be delivered to him. Sutton never got those things. Instead, he was booked into Pinellas County Jail on... On the way there, he started chewing foam attached to the metal caging in the back of the police cruiser. That's not how seamless works. First of all, they don't deliver weed. No. Second, they are not 911. But, oh. How, like, he didn't really need the drugs, did he? Nope, because they put him in the cars. I'm not, 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 not. If, if you're calling 911 and thinking that the police are going to deliver you food and weed, you don't need any drugs. No, you're fine. You're already set. <laughs> yeah, you're all good. You're good. You're cool. You're fine. <sighs> and Kool Aid. And that's just lazy. You yeah. can, you can oh, for fuck you cannot make your own Kool Aid. You have to call the police 80 times. 80 times. I don't think I've ever done anything 80 times in a day. So here's what happened. Do do do. 
Yeah, hey, can I get some weed, Kool-Aid, and burgers? Sir, this is for emergency purposes only. Yeah, okay. Sir, we're gonna have to hang on a minute. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, can I get some weed, Kool-Aid, burgers? Oh my god, I just know what happened. He kept forgot it. He kept forgetting he called them. 80 times? Yes! That man shouldn't be allowed out without an adult guardian. <laughs> you said he was already on shit. That, that explains it. I'm not sure how it's possible to forget something 80 times in rapid succession. You haven't had the right drugs. Unless you're the guy from Memento. I mean, maybe that would explain it. Uh, he just forgot to tattoo 911 is not for food and weed across his chest. Okay, Galileo in the channel said, what, shouting, hey, Kool-Aid didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, police! Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> John G ate my burgers and Kool-Aid, yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, oh, God. oh, we're escalating here. We have more naked, more crazy, more Florida. And I think this man... I don't want more of any of those things. No, we don't, but... OK, first of all, when you see this guy's picture, you're good. He, he's too happy, far too happy after being in these events. I, I man strips naked after be claiming to be a monkey outside 7-Eleven. And he looks okay. far too happy to have been in this situation. Daytona Beach, Florida. A man in Daytona Beach called police from a 7-Eleven convenience store. And when an officer arrived at the scene, Dalen Holloman, 20, would not explain why he called authorities. The report states that Holloman was taken outside and the asked, officer asked him several questions, including, quote, what's going on? Who are you? Where are you from? He replied, I don't know to all of the questions except one. When the officer asked Holloman, what do you know? He replied, quote, I, I know I'm a monkey. The officer said that Holloman removed his clothing to prove to the officer he was a monkey and not human, since the officer stated that humans wear clothes. <laughs> QED. The report said Holloman refused to put his clothes on, even though there were people in and outside of the store charged with indecent exposure. I'm invisible. Can you see me? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. yes. Maybe we put on some shorts before committing any more crimes. <laughs> what also, do we... the key difference between humans and monkeys is clothes. I wouldn't call that the defining point of difference. Yeah, monkeys have a tail. Monkeys have prehensile feet. They don't generally speak English. No. They do the sign language, you know. There's there's a marked DNA difference. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't go with clothes as the top. But he that's the thing. He looks so happy. Look at this guy. He's just like Well, he thinks he's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, poor cop. What do you know? I know I'm a monkey. Yeah, that's a bad day at work. That cop's <laughs> just like, you know what? <laughs> and that's the moment where the cop just went, oh, for fuck's sake. Fantastic. This is this is going to be a long day. Yeah. <laughs> and I just I, the poor guy, if you if you are a monkey, Monkeys don't wear clothes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Problem solved. The officer said he believed Holloman was a sound mind, and when asked to please put on his boxers after being handcuffed, he was able to do so with perfect balance. Well, of course, he's a monkey. <laughs> monkeys balance very well. That's a weird final sentence to the article, though. <laughs> Uh, curious George gets cuffed. 
it, it kind of smacks of frat Frank a little bit. Yeah. Like yeah. hazing ritual. He's kind of lucky they didn't just bust out the taser for the fuck of it. Yeah, well, you'd like to think they only do that. You'd like to. They have but to. But they don't. Yeah. Don't tase me, bro. Yeah. Okay, I, I built up to this one when we started tonight. This final story is holy crap. This is one of those moments, truly, that embodies the spirit of what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, good. This comes from India. Pilots sleep as air hostess turn off autopilot on Bangkok Delhi flight. Two Air India pilots put the lives of 166 passengers on a Bangkok Delhi flight in danger by taking a 40 minute break from the cockpit, and getting two stewardesses to operate the plane in their absence. I'm going to say that again. Getting two stewardesses to operate the plane in their absence. The stunt almost ended in disaster after one of the stewardesses accidentally turned off the autopilot forcing the pilots to rush back to their seats. The incident took place 33,000 feet in the air. 30 minutes later, first officer Ravinda Nath excused himself from the cockpit for a bathroom break and air hostess Jay Blatt to occupy his seat in his absence. According to guidelines, it's standard procedure to insert the presence of a second person in the cockpit so that the pilot is not able to operate the aircraft for some reason. The other crew member in the cockpit can immediately call for the other pilot. What actually happened after made the same mockery of air safety. Minutes after the co-pilot left the cockpit, the captain called another stewardess and asked her to take his seat. The captain did not leave the cockpit immediately. Instead, he spent a few minutes teaching the two stewardesses how to operate the aircraft. If that didn't, if that's something you could teach in a few minutes... We would have a lot more pilots in the world. Like if if you could learn to pilot a major aircraft in the time it takes to learn how to reboot your computer. OK, you see that stick? You pull back, we go up, you push down, we go down, left, right. We got the things on the floor, go wah, wah. And that one says how high up we are. And that one said, OK, you're fine. You got it, though. You got it's it. Still, OK. I mean, I don't know how to fly a plane, so no. I could be wrong. It could just be press the red candy shiny button. Nope. But I feel like it's probably a little more involved than that. And, and I, I don't know who I'm pissed at most. The pilots for for deciding, you know what? We need a nap. We need to take a break or the stewardesses for going, OK, sure, we'll fly the plane. Awesome. Well, I mean, on a flight, I'm pretty sure the pilot is sort of the commanding officer, as it were. <laughs> well, so yeah. I don't know, like, and if, it, if, you know, if the first one, it looked like they were following procedure. I, I can see where that would you would wind up in that situation and be like, well, shit, you know. I would put it on the pilot and co-pilot because that's bullshit. But OK, well, they turned off the autopilot, which means they were pushing buttons and flipping switches. Yeah. That's well, OK. If I'm presented if I'm in a tube hurtling through the sky and the only thing keeping me aloft are controls arrayed in front of me, I'm not going to start experimenting. No, that's not the time to find out what this one does. Riccio, okay, Riccio said, go try the 747. Not the time. Not the time, yeah. Um... At what point did the Foo Fighters save the plane? Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. Well, as played. DA Scott, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, everybody is getting fired here, probably. And fired? You should, okay, 166 There's- people could have died to begin with. Then... There's also what's underneath them because they could have crashed into any goddamn thing. Oh, Two of the flight attendants are busy flying the plane. Who is going to deal with the guy liquefying and communicating a pathogen to everybody on board? I think we jumped a track there. Well, you know, fringe. Yeah, I know. I you know, I could have excused them if they were falling to pieces. But they weren't. They just wanted a, a nap. Look, I need a nap right now. OK, I, this is what I do. OK, this is this is this is earning money for me. This is my thing. I could use a nap at this moment. I've had bad insomnia. But you know what? I'm still sitting here and no one will die. If I get <laughs> up and leave or not. Hell, you could just go to sleep right there in the chair, and I bet you'd still have an audience of about 500. Exactly! Like, I bet half these people would stick around just to watch you sleep in the chair. Okay, Weary Katie, pilots to air hostesses, I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not, that's not okay. And, you know, as if I wasn't like, I'm afraid of flying. I, I don't like airplanes. I don't I don't really love being in a like two ton steel tube 30,000 feet above the ground. It's mm. not my favorite thing. Mm. So things like this not really making me feel better about it. it. It just it annoys me. We have to go through all this fucking security to get on the plane. And then some motherfucker can just try to do this shit. We don't even need terrorists. They couldn't nap in shifts. And yeah, that's right. One go sleep. Right. And the other would sleep. So that at any given time, there's somebody in the cockpit who knows how to operate the plane. You take an hour, come back. I'll take an hour. What was so hard about that? I guess I... I, I I guess the first thing is uh, we we learned this week is plan your breaks accordingly. Coordinate with with your coworkers because otherwise, I mean, hell, I sell makeup for a living, and we have to plan out our breaks so we don't leave shit unattended. And no one's going to die if you don't sell makeup. No one's going to die. Stuff will get stolen, but no one's going to die. Right. No one's going to go hurtling out of the sky at five hundred miles an hour. It's it, you know I've got that you know what I'm thinking I'm just I'm just picturing those two stewardesses sitting in the cockpit and that that I have no idea what I'm doing caption underneath them that's all coming into mind. Yeah. Um, we've learned that if it looks like a dick, especially if it looks like a hundred and fifty meter tall dick, you can say it's not a dick. You you can you can claim it's anything you want. You can outlaw talking about the fact that it's dick. But it's still a giant dick. Yeah. That is. China's probably now blocking our show as if they didn't already. Yeah, I don't think we had a huge audience in China. After you pissed off the king of Thailand, I think the Asian market kind of sunk for us. Hey, Japan probably still loves my ass. No, actually, Mm -hmm. no, I did a whole episode about Japan. They probably don't like me. Philippines, Philippines, still good with the Philippines, Korea, South Korea. They got a lot of Internet in South Korea. You know, what? I I have a weird feeling that like Kim Jong Un would probably be a fan. Yeah, actually, um, we learned this week that t- sometimes spontaneous naked people can happen. And carjack you and be slippery they could just at at any given time you could be minding your own business out in the world i mean we've learned that a few times on this show all of a sudden a naked man would be barely right toward you yeah like you never know when naked could happen to you (laughs) 
<laughs> Seriously, right? And it's never somebody you want to see naked. I, I know, right? Like, it's never Chris Evans running down the street naked. No, it's always the last person you would it's ever like desire. Galifianakis running down the street naked. That's not fair. <laughs> Why can't it be Hugh Jackman? Um, we... We learned this week that if you're going to try to scam people, don't put your name all over the scam, idiot. Or theirs. Yeah. Because, you know, there's that little thing they can just, hey, did they give you money? No. Okay. Yeah. Don't, maybe, maybe don't make your tracks quite so easy to follow. Hmm. <laughs> We learned this week that someone can call 911 80 times and still not take a fucking hint. There are a lot of people in this world that can't take a fucking hint. That that might be like the gold medal, <laughs> gold medal in not being able to take a fucking hint. And my question is, why did they let him get up to 80 you would think after like the third time. Yeah, but no, 80. Send a black and white out to the house to be like, buddy, seriously. Knock it off. We don't have Kool-Aid. Like, we don't we, have food. We, uh, we don't have Kool-Aid. Like, I find it weird that that got up to 80 before he was in cuffs. Redial is a hell of a thing. Uh, 911 does not deliver. That's right. They don't bring stuff to you. They take you away. They don't even 911 is a joke in your town. I had to. How could we not? How could we not? Get up, get, get, get down. 911 is a joke in your tent. Yeah, I could do Flavor Flav. I'm pretty street. And finally, this week we learned that just, you, just because you claim to be something does not make it so. No matter how hard you try. No. Especially if the thing you are claiming to be is a monkey. I mean, I suppose like there's that guy that turned himself into a lizard with all like the facial implants and shit. So I suppose if you really wanted to be a monkey, you could. Yeah, but that guy, that guy made the effort. This guy just, you know, he's a poser. Yeah. He's not putting in any of the work. He's a monkey poser. He's kind of just playing make believe. Right. You know, just, the cops don't like to play make believe. I can't respect that. Uh, uh, yeah, and he's a phony as much as I hate using a family guy joke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, could you could you? Yeah, Don Hoff, could you have glued a, a rug to your chest at least? Just Something. try. Just make an effort. Yes, that's all we're asking for here. <clears throat> a little. Maybe, maybe scratch your armpits and jump around a little bit. No, get into Something. the shit, you know? Commit. <laughs> oh. Just want commitment. We are, we are just. <sighs> I'm now I'm scared to fly again. I didn't used to be, but now I kind of am. I've always been, and it just keeps getting reinforced for me. Because you really just have no fucking clue who's flying that plane. Yeah, they say, oh, it's flying is safer than driving. Except when you put the stewardesses in the pilot's chair and flip off the autopilot. Yeah, well, the difference is it's, it's harder to become a flight attendant than it is to get a driver's license. Any asshole who can make a left turn can get a driver's license. Yeah. So, you know. 
Okay. Okay. We got a family circus joke. We have to go with in the channel. Computer Ronin. Who's flying the plane? I don't know. <laughs> nice. Not me. Not me. I don't know.